Well, uh, first of all, uh, thanks for being here. As you know, we have settled um, uh, the legal side of uh, the, uh, the lawsuit in regards to the Rice family and the state. And as you also know, this has been a very difficult time uh, for the Rice family in particular, uh, but for Cleveland in general and, and the community. And while we have um, settled the legal side of this and the court proceeding side of this um, for $6 million, uh, there is no price that you can put on the life of the loss of a 12-year-old child. So uh, that is my statement. This is media availability. If you have any questions, I'll answer your questions. Yes, sir. Uh, Mary, you know, the settlement, of course, says that the city is not acknowledging wrongdoing mm -hmm. in this case. I'm wondering how do you square the acknowledgement of no wrongdoing with $6 million? Well, that's, uh, you have to ask attorneys how you do those things, but uh, I, don't, I don't ever remember any settlement that admits to any wrongdoing is just a legal way of doing things. And, and it's an accepted legal process and, a, and an accepted legal outcome to settlements as part of what happens. Mayor, why is this settled now? Is this, how long of a process was it? Was there something in particular that led to the finality of this now? Uh, people always speculate, well, do you want to settle before the RNC? What, what way? Well, there, there, there's no, it, it, things just happen as they happen. And, and uh, it was assigned to a judge who, who um, a federal judge, as you know, who assigned another federal judge as a mediator in this case. And he is uh, anyone who has uh, been in the court with, um, uh, with this particular judge knows that he, he really pushes us parties to come to some conclusion, some resolution. And other than that, I don't think there was anything different than that. Mayor, for your comments um, previously about the Tamir Rice case, it seemed as if uh, it was your preference to settle this as opposed, as opposed to having to take it to trial. Is that correct? No, that's not correct. My comments were that we will, we will function in the best interest of the city of Cleveland while also maintaining the sensitivity of the nature of this particular thing, particularly with the family and the fact it's a 12-year-old child. And so we had no preference as to which way it would go. We just uh, knew that it was something that, um, uh, that we needed to resolve and, and that if we couldn't resolve it one way, then we had an option to go another way. How is the city going to pay for this, especially as it faces a very expensive consent decree? Well, it, it's part of what we do. I mean, uh, um, I would, uh, no one looks at and considers what your, your other obligations are. It's just the way it happens. And uh, I believe that we have agreed on two years. Is that correct? So we will pay $3 million uh, a year for two years. And, and when you have, a, you know, we have a budget of, 560 something million dollars and um and we would have liked to have stretched it out a little longer but that's not the way it happened uh, mayor is the city moving forward with disciplinary proceedings um involving the officers who were involved in this yes we're going through that process we're looking we have um uh instituted what is the name of the committee sir what is sir all right, the uh, review committee that really reviews all of the use of uh, deadly force. And uh, we did the same thing uh, in, in regards to um, uh, the East Cleveland shooting. And they, uh, they're in the middle of that process. They're reviewing evidence, forensic, all those kind of things, testimonies. And then they will make a recommendation to the chief uh, as to what they believe it should be, then depending on what the chief decides, he'll either hear it himself or send it to the safety director. There will be hearings set uh, by either the chief or the safety director for the police officers involved. And then once those hearings are over with and the due process is afforded them, then there will be a decision made. Mayor, is there any uh, prohibition on the Rice family speaking out on the matter post uh, the signing? 
uh, I, not that I know of, not that I know of. You, I, I think is in the, whatever is in the, uh, the, what do you call it? The court entry. The, right. And I don't believe there is, but not that I know. How was that figure decided on? Negotiation for some time. Just a, just a matter of negotiation and a, and a judge who was uh, mediating it and, and keeping the process moving for some time. Mayor Jackson, my name is Abhi Scruggs. I'm a stringer with The Guardian. I'm sorry I'm late. Uh, I do have a question, mm -hmm. and that's about the city's, how is the city going to pay for this given its current budget condition? Well, I already answered that. But um, it, it is an obligation we have, and whenever you have an obligation uh, that you have, then you must pay that. And so uh, it is uh, $3 million a year for two years out of a budget that is $560-something million in terms of operations. So um, it's an obligation we have, and we will fulfill our obligations. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Well, Mayor, I wonder, uh, you know, in the settlement saying that there is no acknowledgement of wrongdoing, does that um, <coughs> complicate at all what you're able to, uh, any disciplinary measures you're able to, to reach uh, with the officers? And you said the lawsuit there is no. There, it doesn't um, compromise us at all. Uh, we have entered into this agreement to, uh, in, in doing that, we have protected the rights of the city and, and, and its taxpayers in regards to that. And we have preserved all of our choices and options in regards to any administrative hearing that will come forward and any decisions made out of that. Is that correct? Okay. How does this lawsuit um, set a precedent? I don't know. I, I, I imagine I'll probably hear about it in a day or two with other people coming forward, so I really don't know. I do know that we take these things uh, on individual cases, and, and we don't we don't have a cookie cutter or boilerplate kind of um, uh, thing here or outcome here. So I, I really don't know. I, I would suspect that there will be people who will be looking at this as they move forward with whatever suits they have with clean. But I don't know. But for us, we take it just step by step, uh, individual case by individual case. Yes. Uh, Mayor, at this point, I mean, what is the overall takeaway in your eyes from the, the Rice case at this point? Now we've gotten to this point. Um, a 12 year old died. And regardless of fault or, or facts or anything, that should not have happened. And believe me, if, if I had my rathers, I wouldn't be standing here in front of you today talking about this. If I had my rethers, it would not have happened. But that's not the case, is it? So we deal with things as we have to deal with them. Mayor, what is the, uh, the time frame for the disciplinary process? Um, we're, there's a lot of work because we have to review all the stuff that went before the grand jury, all of the new things that may have come out, if there were uh, uh, there weren't statements. I think there was some Garrity, uh, um, other kind of Miranda kind of things we have to deal with. And so in doing all of that, we almost had to start from the beginning. And there's a lot of information. And this committee, along with the police who are investigating it, they'll, they're, they're going through, sifting through volumes of stuff. So that's where we are now. Once that is completed, then I'm, I imagine this committee has to come together and make some recommendation as to what uh, the committee believes happened and what they believe were um, things that were in place that were violated or responsibilities people had and didn't meet, all those kind of things. The chief then has to review it. And based on his review, he'll determine whether he'll handle the, uh, the hearings administratively at, with himself or he'll refer it to the safety director. In either of those cases, there has to be a time set up uh, with um, the police officers and their unions, attorneys, 
and and so that could be continued all these other kind of things so I'm, I'm saying all that to say to you that um, it will happen in months not years uh, and and uh, our goal is to have it done before the end of the year without jeopardizing or 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 tainting the due process part of this uh, what we've done not only in this case but all the other cases that we've handled is that we've always emphasized transparency and due process and and we're not going to sacrifice transparency and due process just to expedite something or to prolong something when it's ready to be done that's when we'll do it but my anticipation it would be before the end of the year mayor can you or the director give us some insight into how you came to the six million dollar figure why not five why not seven why did this settle on six well uh, i mean again it's a negotiated process to talk about how you reach a settlement in the details of those negotiation i think is prohibited if i'm not mistaken but 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 well, I, I, I understand that. I understand that. But, but, but uh, uh, as I said, I'd, I'd rather not even be here talking to you about that. But I am. And I will say to you that we went through uh, a legal process that, that we go through many times on many different cases. And there's an ask over here, and, there's a, and then there's a response over here. And, they're, and usually they're miles apart. And you negotiate. You negotiate things. Now, what comes, the factors that come into play in the conversation that uh, is had in those meetings where the judge is there and all that, that's, a, that's something that happens in the court. But we reached this conclusion and, and we accept it because we have agreed to it. Yeah, I believe there, there was a request from a city council member uh, to the law department to review the case right. for possible right. city charges that could Oh, yes, it is, because remember, I just gave you this process that we're looking at the criminal side of that. Or have we, is there some uh, quicker way to do that and look at things in a preliminary way and say, preliminarily, we don't think this, or preliminarily, we think that, yes. But if we're going to be thorough about this, then we want to go through the process. We want to go through the process. The county has already made their determination with the grand jury. There was a request of the law department to look at it to see if there was any thing on a misdemeanor side or whatever it may be. I do believe when the county looked at the felony charge, they also looked at anything inclusive in that that could have come forward. They reached their conclusion of, and, and, and now it's been asked for us to look at it. And we're going to look at it, but we're going to be thorough about it. Anybody else? Uh, one final thing, uh, and just like uh, in law, they tell you never ask the final question. Uh, but I, I do, um, I do want you to understand that this is not easy for me personally, uh, or, or the city in general. And I can't speak to how difficult it must have been for the family of Tamir Rice. I can't even speak to that because it's hard for me to imagine it and, and how I would feel and behave at that time. But this is something that, um, that we are, have done. This is moving us closer and closer to um, what we believe will be an outcome that would perhaps on the administrative side people will like, maybe they won't like, I don't know. Just like I didn't know if they were people going to like or not like this settlement. But at the end of the day, a 12 year old child lost their life. And that should not have happened in the city of Cleveland. It should not have happened. Okay? Thank you.